Hello everyone, welcome to episode 8 of my series A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. Last episode, we explored how to deform a plane to create a deformation game. So in this episode, we will be looking as to how to generate limitless terrain using planes. Please note, this episode relies on knowledge from episode 4, so if you have not watched that episode, please do so before proceeding with this tutorial. For a quick recap, we want to get the player's location and identify the direction of movement. If this player has progressed X amount in a specific direction, and if there is no terrain currently present, we want to generate a terrain for the player to progress on. We then loop on this, making it limitless and infinite. In a later tutorial, I will address how to optimize the game further by using object pooling. Now that we know how and what we will be doing, let's jump into the code. The first thing that we want to do now that we're inside Unity is create a script called Plane Generation. Once we have created the script, we can go inside and start coding. As always, the first things that we're going to want to do is define some variables. Here we've defined a game object plane, which we'll be using to produce the planes and another game object player, which we will be using to get the location of the player. The next variables that we want to introduce is the radius and the plane offset. Here we've assigned radius the value of 5 and plane offset the value of 10. Radius is how many planes do we want spawned around our player and the plane offset is the amount of squares that a plane takes up. In this instance, it's 10. We can now go ahead and take a few values that we have defined in episode 4, starting with the start position, followed by the X player move and Z player move and also the X player location and Z player location, although there are a few modifications. For the X player location, we are now taking the player's transform position X, dividing that by our plane offset. We are then multiplying the flawed value by our plane offset. We do the same for the Z location. There's one more thing that we need to introduce, and that is our hash table. This is the hash table, like in episode 4, that we will be using to assert whether or not we already have a plane generated or not. We can go ahead and remove the start function. In our update function, there's a few things that we need to do. The first being is, when the game is loaded, we need to generate the terrain around the players. We can of course do this in the start function, but I will show you a method to do this in the update function. First being is we need to check, is the player's position currently that of our start position? We can do if start pause is equal to vector3 dot zero, which in this case it always will be because when this class is loaded, the value is assigned to vector three zero, and that only happens once. You can, of course, copy over the code from episode four, but for this instance, I will quickly run through exactly what we're doing as it's the same that we do to check whether the player has moved and to generate the terrain. The first thing that we need to do is create two for loops. One for the X axis, where our integer x will be our negative radius as we're spawning around the player. Then we assert is x less than our radius. We want x to increment. Then we do the same for our z axis. Now within these two for loops, we need to create a position of where we will be spawning our plane. So we create a vector3 variable 
called pos. That pos will be a new vector three taking in our x value multiplied by our plane offset as we don't want the planes to be overlapping plus the location as to where the player has moved. For our y-axis, we'll keep it as zero. We then do the same for our z-axis. We do z times by our offset, adding in our z player location. Now, before we go ahead and start generating our terrain, we need a check. We need to check if this position already exists within our hash table. If this position already exists in our hash table, we just want to ignore it. But if it doesn't, this is where we want to generate our plane. Once this plane has been generated, we want to add this to our hash table. Taking in our position as the key and our value will be our newly generated plane. Now that we've completed our generation of the starting position, we need to create another boolean which will be used in an if statement to check whether the player has moved a specific amount or not. So we can do outside of the update function, we can create a boolean function called has player moved. Then we have an if statement within this saying mathf.abs if the player's x player move is greater than or equal to our plane offset or if our mathf.abs z player move is greater than or equal to our plane offset we want to return true otherwise we want to return false now we can go back to the update function outside of the first if statement we want another if statement which says if has player moved we can go ahead and copy across all this code within the if first if statement, paste it in, save, head over into Unity, create an empty game object called plane generation, attach our script. Now we are missing two game objects, a plane and our player. We can create a 3D object of type plane. We can call it plane. Put that into our assets folder as a prefab. Create another 3D object of type capsule, which we will call player. We can delete the plane object as we will no longer need this. Go into our plane generation object, attach our plane from our assets and the player from the game view. Now, if we run our code, voila, we have planes being generated with the correct offset and if we move our player we can see the terrain is being generated a plane at a time i hope you're all keeping well and enjoy this episode please like comment and subscribe this has been russ and i'll catch you next time